Today on The Code Wolf, we're going to answer a classic AI question, which is exactly how much faster is an AI model when running on a GPU versus a CPU? Why is there such relentless demand for faster and larger graphics cards? Well, you can actually discover a meaningful answer to this question on your own local computer using a simple combination of Olama, Docker, and some basic app code written in a language like C Sharp or Python. So in this video, we'll see how to run an AI model using Olama in a Docker container to control which resources the AI model leverages, such as primarily the CPU or the GPU, and then we'll see how to measure the AI response time in these different scenarios using a few types of prompts sent and tracked by some simple app code. Now, this video is certainly not intended to be an official AI benchmarking tutorial for complex algorithms or even a comparison between different models. This video is purely an educational exercise for us to visualize and learn about AI performance on different hardware and how to measure things like prompt response time using our app code. This should be a fun exercise, so please hit those subscribe and like buttons if you enjoy this content, and let's get started. I have timestamped the video below, so if you're not interested in any of the setup or the context of how any of this works, you can just jump ahead to the part where we actually run the app and look at the performance difference. But I think going through the setup process provides some really helpful context about what's actually going on here. I also want to give a special thank you to Yuvraj Ingail, the latest Delta Wolf member. I really appreciate your support. And thank you to everyone else who continues to support the channel as well. So to follow along with the demo ahead, there's actually only two tools you need to have installed on your computer, which are Docker Desktop and .NET, specifically .NET 9, if you want to use the provided GitHub project. I'm not going to provide a full intro to either of these tools. I'm gonna to assume you have some familiarity with Docker and that you have some programming experience either with .NET or a similar language or framework. So I will show you all of the steps it takes to recreate the demo and follow along. I'm just not going to give all kinds of background and starter help on these tools themselves. I also want to mention that you will need a computer with a decent dedicated GPU to really follow along and see similar results or for this demo to work properly. So on this computer, I'm using a GeForce RTX 4090, which is a really powerful card. And then for the CPU, I'm using a Ryzen 9 7900X. And then the RAM and such aren't as important. I have 64 gigs in here, but as long as you have a good amount of memory, you should be just fine. So to get started, we want to head over to Docker Desktop here, and we need to get our AI models running locally in a container using Olama. So the first thing we need to do here is pull down the Olama image. So we can say Docker pull Olama slash Olama. And I already have that image locally, so it's just gonna say that I'm up to date. But if you don't have it, that download will start and then we'll have that image available to create containers from. And of course, we can pop over to our images and we see that Olama image is there now. And from there, we need to launch two separate containers. And so one of those containers is going to be Olama running in CPU mode only. And the other container is going to be running in GPU mode. So the first command that we have to run, I'll just paste this in here. This is gonna be docker run and then dash D for detached mode. So that'll free up our console here. And then we do need to set a volume because this is where our AI models are going to be stored. So that's gonna be in the root folder in an Olama folder. And we'll look at that more in a second when we pull our models down. And then we're gonna open up the default port that Olama expects, which we'll connect to from our code. And we'll name this container Olama CPU. And then that's just gonna be the Olama image that we just pulled down. So I'll hit enter and that's gonna start our container and that pops in up here. So there's our Olama CPU running. And then we wanna repeat this command for the GPU with one slight difference. So I'll just clear this out here and paste in the next command. And so this is the exact same command except that it has this dash dash GPUs equals all. And this just tells the container that it can access our GPU. I only have one GPU in this computer, but obviously you can have more than one. And I also want to mention that this is gonna be exposed on port 11,500. And that's the port that our code will connect to, but we're still exposing the same Olama port. So this is kind of the external Docker port. And then this is the Olama port. So that way we have two containers where Olama is accessible from our code and they're just running on different ports so we can hit them separately. So I'll start that up. 
and there's our Olama GPU as well. So now we have our two containers running. And the last step we have to do here is to get those models running in Olama in the container. So for example, if I were to click on Olama CPU, and now we're inspecting that container, we can go over to this execute tab, and this actually lets us run commands inside of the container. And so for this, we're gonna pull down a couple models, and we can use Olama to do that. So for example, we can pull down uh, the Phi 3 Mini model, which is sort of a general purpose generative text model. So I'll run that, and I already have this pulled, so that finishes really quickly. And now that model is stored on that container volume we set up. So if we were to go over to our files, and I'll just collapse our terminal here, but in the files of this container, you can now go down into the root folder. And if we look at Olama inside the models folder, inside the manifests, inside the registry library, sure enough, we hit the models that are stored on this volume. So these are the three models that are accessible by Olama in the container that's running. And so you would just want to pull down these other two models. So if we go back to our execute tab, we could say, Olama pull code llama uh, and Olama pull gnomic embed text, which is an embedding model. So we're going to see different demos of different types of AI models. So those three models are now in our container. Now we're in the CPU container right here, but I want to point out that we started both containers with the same volume. So for example, if we go over to our GPU container and we go into our files tab again, this container also has access to that same volume. So if we go down to the root, even though we haven't manually installed ever, anything on this container, down in our library folder again, there's our three models. So now we have Olama running in two containers with access to three different models that are tailored towards three different tasks, and one is running in CPU mode and one is running in GPU mode. So our containers are all set, and now we can switch over to our code to see how this is actually going to work. So I have this simple .NET app set up, and it might look like a lot of code, but that's just because it's repetitive because we're running tasks multiple times. But basically the way this works is we set up an AI client for each of the three task categories that we're gonna benchmark against. So we have conversational clients, so our iChat client, and then we have code gen clients, so these will generate code like C Sharp or Python. And these also use a chat client, but if you'll notice over here, we're specifying uh, the code llama model instead of the Phi 3 model. And you'll also notice these are hitting those ports that we set up. So this is our CPU container, and this is our GPU container. So they're both hitting a llama, but just on different ports, and the clients are named appropriately. So the chat client GPU hits the GPU container, and then they both use the same model. And so further down, I've created four different tests that we're gonna run. So we're gonna ask the AI to generate a story, which tests kind of its creative generative ability. And then we ask it to answer a real question that involves some detailed thinking. So this is writing a detailed summary of the evolution of military technology over the last 2000 years. And then we have a classic code generation test where we ask it to generate a minimal REST API for CRUD operations on product data. And finally, we ask it for another common AI task, which is uh, to generate embeddings based on this large block of text that I've pasted in here. So we're gonna walk through these one at a time. Each of these are calling these methods down below. These aren't really that important. These are just kind of boilerplate code to send out a request to the AI. But the important part here is that we're using a stopwatch. And so the stopwatch lets us time how long the answer takes back to come back from the AI. So I wouldn't worry too much about this code. You can kind of read through it yourself, but just know that these two methods send out requests for chat completions and to generate embeddings. So those are just called up here for our different scenarios. So I'm actually just gonna collapse these so we don't have to worry about them. So now let's start to actually walk through the demo here to see the difference in performance and get a better idea of what's actually gonna happen. So in our terminal over here, we can start to run this app. And right now I have most of these scenarios commented out. So I've just left this one scenario open. So when we run the app, it's going to generate a story. So it says, write me a three paragraph short story about woodland creatures that follows the hero cycles. So just something with a little bit of nuance or depth to it. And so let's see now what happens when we say .NET run. And remember, the CPU version is going to run first and then the GPU version will run. So I'm gonna hit .NET run and it's gonna to go to work, and it's going to talk to Olama in our Docker container. And you'll notice this CPU response, the performance here really isn't too bad. 
but it is kind of sluggish if you're trying to quickly work on a project or really get your answer back quickly. This is going to generate three different paragraphs. And again, the wait time is sort of acceptable, but we'll just give this a second to finish and see how long that actually took. And then the GPU version is gonna fire immediately after this is done so we can see a comparison back and forth. So this is just about to wrap up. And so there the GPU version just tears through it immensely faster than the CPU version. And if we look at the CPU version, you'll notice it actually made a mistake. So here it actually output four paragraphs, which is not what we asked for. And, and then if we look at the bottom here, that took 53 seconds. And the GPU version followed afterwards. And that correctly output three paragraphs. And that only took five seconds. So yes, there was an extra paragraph on the other one. But that's a 10x speed improvement overall in terms of just generating a response. And the GPU one was technically more accurate, but that could just be a fluke with that particular response. Now let's see what happens if we ask it to answer a real question, quote unquote. So here is that question about the evolution of military technology. And so I'm just gonna say .NET run. And again, the CPU AI is going to go to work here. And it's generating some bullets and it's kind of going at its leisurely pace here to come up with a response. Now it is nice that it's kind of breaking this down between ancient times and medieval times and everything, but that means this will probably be a fairly long response. And let's see how that compares uh, to the GPU version. And for some of these, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit because this can take a while. I don't wanna make you sit here. So let's kind of see how this progresses. Okay, so I actually ended up running this twice because the first time the CPU answer went off on kind of a really long tangent, and the answers were not very comparable in size. So I ran it again, and they were more comparable, so let's see what happened here. So the GPU time only took six seconds, and so that printed out a fairly long response here. So if we kind of scroll through this and highlight up to the start of that answer, we can see that's a pretty sizable response, and it only took six seconds. Well, now, if we look at the CPU version, this took a minute and four seconds. And if we scroll through this one, it's again, similar size. Um, so if we kind of compare them, they are roughly the same size. I would say the CPU one is slightly longer again. But again, this took a minute five instead of six seconds. So this was roughly a 10x multiplier in speed. The GPU was significantly faster again with this six seconds. Now this next one is really interesting, this code generation one. So code generation is notoriously difficult, and so we'll see how this performs. Again, we're gonna be using the Code Llama model, which in my testing and experience is actually a pretty good model for code generation. It can give some impressive results. So we're gonna run this again, but there's one other thing I wanna show you while this is running. So let's say .NET run, and remember this is going to generate the C-sharp code for a minimal API to perform CRUD operations. And so we'll say run, and our CPU is going to go to work here. And so it's working hard, it's starting to print out some .NET code here, but there's another way to view what's going on here, and that's if we head over to our task manager. So you'll notice our GPU is only at 20% right now or so, but the CPU is at 86%, and all of the 24 cores in this computer are being utilized right now. And this GPU traffic is actually not coming from the AI model, so if you'll notice, these all spiked way up as soon as we submitted that prompt because it's using the CPU to generate this answer. The GPU, however, has remained flat. I have a bunch of other stuff open that's using up these resources, but it's remained flat after we ran our prompt, and that's because the GPU is not being used to generate the response. So I just wanna prove that this is using the CPU, and so if we go back to VS Code, our CPU response is still plugging away, um, and it's about to switch over to the GPU version since it's summarizing uh, the end of it here. So let's see how the GPU compares. And when that response starts printing out, let's switch over to our task manager and you can see the GPU immediately spikes up. So up here, it's now at 85%, but then it's already dropping back down because it finished the answer. And so the time for that was only 11 seconds. And so it generated the summary and all of the endpoints here. And then if we look at our CPU version, that took one minute, 32 seconds. So that's again about an eight or nine X multiplier. And if we compare these two responses, they're pretty similar. So the actual code looks very similar and they're roughly the same size again. So much faster performance by the GPU again. And I think it's cool that you can kind of watch this performance in real time. So let's look at one final example. And this one again, will have slightly different behavior since we're using embeddings. 
So this one will run super quick, but the results are still interesting. So I'll just clear our screen here. And then let's say .NET run. And this is gonna complete almost instantly. And so you can see the CPU and GPU both finished. And the GPU was at 1.2 seconds, whereas the CPU was at 1.3. And this is interesting because this is a simpler task. It's just converting this text into an embedding. And so in this case, the performance difference isn't as noticeable. And so if I were to actually run this again, this time we'll see that it was about a half a second versus a third of a second. It's interesting that some of that performance benefit is lost when it's a much smaller or simpler task. So this is, you know, maybe a 50% increase uh, in performance, which is much different than the 10x performance we saw in some of those other scenarios. So if I were to keep running this, we'll get very similar results, so about a third of a second and a half a second again. So the point here is that the more complex and involved your operations are, the more we start to see this benefit from the GPU performance. And that's really important because in enterprise scenarios, where you're consuming massive amounts of data and running really sophisticated AI prompts and queries with large context, this GPU performance becomes an increasingly significant factor where you might start to see performance that's tens, if not hundreds of times more efficient. And that's just a huge deal at the data center level. They're processing massive amounts more data and prompts with these powerful GPUs than we ever could with CPUs. So I hope you found this interesting and kind of a cool demo. Again, check out the code and get this running yourself and play around with it. I think this is really interesting. Please remember to hit those subscribe and like buttons or support the channel however you can, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.